The market reacts immediately. Now, what happens when the Fed doesn't do that, then the market reacts immediately upward. So remember, the market's always forecasting the future. They're not waiting for things to happen. So they're bullish now that rates can go lower. Well, they came lower. Now they're moving higher. Now, why are they moving higher? Today, we have retail sales were higher. Okay, I'm expecting home sales to be better this you know, spring. So we're going to have home sales come up. So in other words, there's going to be less market influences out there as far as, you know, talk for the feds to lower rates. Hi, this is Chris German, and welcome back to the Apartment Dealer Show. Today, we're discussing interest rates. Interest rates, which was the biggest culprit of creating issues for the 2023 market, will those issues come on over to 2024? Now, if you've been following interest rates or the news at all, you know that interest rates have come down from their high of last year. But will that continue to be the case? Even amidst the fact that the federal government has hinted at the fact they will be lowering interest rates today. Why may that not impact you as a multifamily investor to the degree that you think it will? Well, we're here to address that in all things commercial financing with none other than Mr. Gil Figueroa. Now, if you've watched our channel for some time, you know that Gil Figueroa is that individual we bring in because of his 30 plus years of experience being a commercial loan broker. Gil has processed millions, hundreds of millions of dollars in multifamily financing, has helped many, many of my personal clients. And he's my go-to source on a daily basis to know exactly what's happening with interest rates. What are the lenders uh, considering when they're looking at financing a multifamily investor? Our clients, what are their requirements? What's changing on the ground? Gil is my inside source and I bring him here to you today. So lock in because I know the next few minutes are going to be very meaningful to you as an investor, very meaningful to your real estate portfolio. With that, help me welcome Mr. Gil Figueroa. So Gil, welcome to the show. Thank you, Chris. So I thought we'd take the viewers through a trip down memory lane, where we came from to where we are now, um, to put to bed, I think, uh, some of the misinformation that's out there and some of the false expectations and, and I'll uh, explain what I mean. So if we go back to 2020, uh, we're talking about interest rates that started with a three. So many investors took advantage, refinanced the uh, current loans they had at that point. Uh, they, you know, obviously if they were purchasing new properties and you have a three, three and a half percent interest rate, even though they were paying, say, higher prices than higher prices than today, the cash flow, the property still cash flowed well because the interest rate was so low. Moving forward, a market begins to change. Uh, interest rates obviously began to rise to the tip top of last year, probably somewhere around seven and a quarter for buildings in the local markets that we serve. So we went from three to seven and a quarter in a pretty short order. And now interest rates have come down uh, somewhat to probably more of a normal rate um, when we say historically more in line with, you know, say the last 20 years, what would be an average rate? We're hovering there. So the question is, do you think it's likely we will see an interest rate again of 3% or 4%? Is that a likely scenario? Well, we have to put things in perspective, uh, Chris. If we recall, would cause rates to drop from, you know, in the fives and sixes um, in 19 to uh, 20 and 21 to the threes was a global meltdown with COVID. We had a shutdown globally. So we had a tremendous amount of, you know, job loss, of issues, of fear. Um, and that fear caused, you know, governments to buy treasuries hand over fist, which in essence caused those treasuries below 1%. We got down to 0398 so can it happen again? I venture to say, I hope it doesn't. How's that? Um, but it is not a normal threshold per se. 
And so the reason why I start there, Gil, is because uh, I'm sure you're speaking with investors. I'm speaking with investors daily who, again, have taken themselves out of the market, in my opinion, in false hope and false uh, expectations that we'll be seeing an interest rate of 3 or 4%. And in the meanwhile, uh, potentially passing up on some very good uh, real estate to purchase, in the meanwhile, not being open to say uh, an analysis of how is their current property performing versus, you know, what options do they have for growth or to increase? All simply predicated on, well, I'm going to wait until four percent again. And question is, you know, what if that day uh, doesn't come? We have touted you over the years in terms of your ability to predict you know, the the direction of interest rates. And so I'd like to take us to a, a snippet uh, of your talk that you gave at our last educational luncheon that we hold for landlords. Let's, let's view that. Let's see if, uh, you know, what you proposed at the time uh, came to pass. And, and then, of course, we're going to move into what's taking place today. So let's take a look at that clip. This is where we're at now, guys. So we broke that channel, didn't we? See that channel? It's broken, clearly broken. Now, you see the bottom, that first little arrow on the bottom, that was October 21st when I said rates were going to go up. Okay? Did they go up? Then the next channel is the inflection point. That's when I send that email on August of 22, when I said, it's time to do locks now. We're headed up. We're headed to four. Where did it go? Four. Now, what does four mean? Well, four treasury means that banks usually charge two and a half percent or three percent over. So a two and a half percent for treasury drove us from a rate of five to six and a half. Well, three, because we hit it October. Okay. So that being said, that's where this market's headed. Now, where are we headed and what's our future? Our future is at that top box, next target, minimum. Did you hear what I said? Minimum. We're headed to five. So that means rates will be Seven and a half to eight. So, Gil, that video uh, is from our lunch in sept uh, September of last year. Now that you rewatch that and knowing then what proceeded to happen, you know, in the following months, uh, what's your take on your predictions at that time? Well, I said Treasury's 10 year Treasury at 5%. It actually went to 4.99. So, I'd say that was pretty good. Pretty good, accurate statement as far as uh, my forecast. And that was, you know, the peak of that trend line. So it did have some, some resistance there. We've now come down. As of late December, we got as low as 3.78 on the 10-year treasury. And that caused some banks to reprice. Now, currently, we're at 4.1. So we have jumped up 40 basis points or so. Yeah, so banks have repriced on uh, that, that bump. So, to speak. so to clarify, you know, for the, the viewer, when we talk about the 10 year treasury, obviously then the banks put a premium on top to get us to where the interest rate, you know, is today. And so if we go back to the days following that last uh, educational event, you know, we saw as high as seven and a quarter. We're down now to say about six and a quarter, but the Fed has not moved the rate. They basically said, we believe we're going to lower the rates come 2024, but they have not lowered the rates. And yet, rates have dropped 1%. Why did that happen? The feds don't control the rates. They control the federal funds rate. So the 10-year treasury is an open market that's a global market. There's traders at that global market all day long. So what happened since then is there's been a big rally on the, on the stock market. So we hit new highs. We actually started that rally right in uh, early November, late October, when we hit that peak and we started going down on treasuries. So now what's happened is people are having an arbitrage between r the rates and the stock market. So again, the treasuries are not controlled by the feds per se. Okay, It's an open market. There's other things that drive it. There's fear, there's war. There's other situations that create more marketability for that 10-year treasury uh, where it's at in today's marketplace. So it's interesting. Essentially, there was a 1% uh, 
uh, uh, buffer, if you will, um, that, that we had there, or, you know, that we've retracted, uh, since the height of, you know, again, seven and a quarter and now six and a quarter. So we're, we're more in line with historical average uh, interest rates. And so along, you know, I want to, uh, go there because to my opening comments of concerns, you know, investors, the number one concern of last year and why last year's market, 2023 multifamily sales here locally of the markets that myself and my team service, the same markets of which, you know, you serve landlords, it was a horrible year. There's no other way to cut it. If we're talking about the amount of inventory that traded hands, um, the number of properties that sold here soon, we're going to be recording our year-end market update, and we're going to give the facts and figures. But the reality of it is last year, especially coming off of 2022, that was a historic year. We went from historic best year in quite some time to one of the worst years in some time. And the main corporate of that was interest rates. But is that a valid concern? In other words, if we're now around historical rates, do you see that Gil, or maybe let's take the perspective, let's take me and you out of the equation. Let's discuss some of those clients that you have that are the seasoned investors. You know, we they own large portfolios. Um, they've seen rates come and go. What would you say, you know, their take is on the market, on the concerns of, you know, the general market? Well, Chris, over the over the my 30 year career, what I've noticed is the real seasoned guys that know what they're doing, if they find the right product as far as, you know, the real estate price at the right amount, the right upside, <laughs> and they can have a profit and maybe look at a longer term profit two or three years down the line, they get engaged. So they don't wait for the pie in the sky speculation of an amazing rate or an amazing price. I always see them base it on their analytics. If it hits their targets, they move. And that's been, frankly, their winning strategy. So a lot of speculation goes on. Last year, I remember I was stomping up and down in January of, of 22 saying, you got to lock this 5%, 5.5% rate. It's going to 7, 7.5. And, and everybody said, oh, no, we were here. The rates are going to come back down to the fours. And we, I heard that. For six months, seven months of last year, finally when we got, you know, over, you know, six and a half and seven, that conversation got a little soft. Here it is again. So rates have dropped, but they've gone up. So yeah, we went from a 4.9 10-year treasury to a 3.8. But what we have to realize is we're back to 4.1 right now. We are higher and we're trading higher. Today it hit, you know, a four-month high or two-month high, excuse me. We're moving up. We're in a training range. Uh, I'm watching the 4.3 marker right now. Hopefully, we don't surpass that marker. If we do, we might be challenging that 5% treasury again. I don't think we are, but right now, on a short-term basis, I'm calling for a lock. On a longer-term basis, I think we have one more new revisit to lower rates, but not at substantial amounts that people think they are. I think if we get to three and a half treasury, we should be very happy with that. You know, I mentioned that we're preparing for uh, to release our market update video. And when we prepare for these videos, I literally go through, my staff and I, every property that's sold in the markets that we service over the course of last year, every sale comp we take a look at. And the interesting thing is that amidst all the concern and anxiety, and I'm not saying I was excited about the higher interest rates. I'm not saying they don't impact your cash flow. But there was some really good deals that sold, some really good deals that traded, that somebody uh, got some good buys because they were able to see past the concern at the moment and look at the bigger picture of it's a solid building with solid financials. I can always refinance. And they were able to take advantage of a good deal. And even today, I would say there's some buildings that are on the open market today as a recording of this video that are solid deals, solid cap rates. I mean, you're talking about the average cap rate now is above 5%. And a year ago, year and a half ago, if a property would have been offered at even close to a 5% cap rate, investors would have been all over it. But now it's a different story. So as they say, you know, investors want their cake and eat it too. But the problem is we now are seeing higher cap rates because the interest rates have come down. 
And so if interest rates were to come down further, the interest rates are going to go right back down. And like many have said, they're going to, and sellers are going to reprice their deals, taking into account the lower interest rates, buy, buy great deals, buy, buy 5% cap rates. It's just something to be cognizant of. Now, we're not saying we know exactly what's going to happen, but the reality of it is uh, the interest rates are moving the market. Now, having said all that, if an investor is still truly concerned, you know what? I, they, they're telling themselves, I can just not see myself taking a 6% rate. What are the options to buy down the rate? Not really many. Um, <laughs> most lenders you know, maybe have a quarter spread that you can buy down for half a point or a point. Um, it starts not to make too much sense over a point. Your recovery time takes longer to recover that capital cost. So not really a big portion. Not like we're single family, you got a little better spreads and so forth. Multifamily banks really don't allow such a spread buy down. So not much. Today, we have you know two lenders maybe under six, or right around that level. And for the most part, all of them are at six and a half now. Chase, I talked to Chase this morning, they were at six, seven. So that being said, the rates are moving. We could still get rates in the low sixes. I think it's a great time. I think it's a great time if it makes sense. Also consider the fact that the short-term loans have not dropped. So we have SOFR that is the most popular index out there, still at 4.6. So your average margin being maybe two and a half or two and three quarters, that still puts us at around seven and a half for the rate on an adjustable. So once these five years or three-year loans run out of time, these short-term loans are not going to treat them well. They're going to be seven and a half or so. Some even higher because they're tied to a five-year or a three-year CNT. So those could even be higher. I had one client show me their adjustment today at 9%. So wow. we're obviously refinancing them out of that re-engagement of that short-term rate. Well, and that's, so that's another message for today is those, for those investors who their loan is either uh, gone to the adjustable period or it soon will, and you have three and a half percent, it's very likely your rate is going to double. And what is it that you're going to do about that? And even if you refinance today, if the rate is per gill, say six and a half percent, do the math on three and a half to six and a half percent. Do you still love that deal <laughs> as much at a six and a half percent rate? Or should you analyze, do some analysis, employ a strategy uh, to maybe uh, do a ten thirty one exchange into something that would be more lucrative at a pro into a property that's being offered at a more competitive price today, or what? In other words, don't just sit there and take it on the chin, but reevaluate what's best for your uh, financial. And I'm sure, Gil, you've had many of these conversations with uh, landlords saying, "Look, between the increase in my mortgage payment because of the interest rate and property insurance, which is doubling and tripling." This just happened to me on one of my own buildings. Uh, I ran my end of the year analysis for myself where I look at the cash flow on all my buildings, my rate of return on equity, which is a key factor. Uh, one of my buildings, because my insurance went from 3,600 to 10,000 something, which is just, yeah, that, that building doesn't look so sexy anymore, right? And so I'm beginning to contemplate, truthfully, a 1031 exchange um, because I, I see more uh, a better opportunity. And if I were to take my equity that I have there and to move on down uh, the road. Would you say you're getting some of the same sentiment having those conversations with investors? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I think it's a great time to reanalyze the situation with me as far as the finances are concerned and then with you, with the, what other options do they have as far as, you know, retrading or getting in a DST or what other options they may have. So I think it's a great time to to review that. It's fantastic time, especially since there's not a whole lot of inventory in the market. And if these short-term rates don't adjust and these loans are adjusting, there could be a lot more inventory on the market. Well, and I'm sure there's there's going to be. Um, it, this change in interest rates and, and especially this issue with the loans that are going adjustable this year, all the major banks are bracing for it. Uh, I've spoken to some of the largest investors e here locally. They're bracing for it. They're even discussing, look, 
we might be on the sidelines for a little bit because we're going to have to deploy cash to buy down loans just to be able to refinance because the properties are not going to appraise. So maybe let's discuss that for a minute. So let's say an investor bought a building and the value is about the same. It would appraise for to to you know theoretically to cover their previous loan amount. But because interest rates have gone up since when they initially bought the building three or five years, why is it, Gail, that potentially they may not be able to refinance for the full loan amount because the loan dollars would fall short? Why is that? Well, with our market and our cap rates, you know, we've been in the three, four cap rates for quite a long time and low interest rates. Our average down payment over the last three years, I would say, is probably at least 40% down. So we haven't been loan to value constraint. We've been debt service constraint. So what does that mean? That means lenders have the capacity to go much higher on loan to value as long as we debt service. So our issue has not been loan to value. It's been debt service. Uh, with that being said, most lenders want to see your net operating income, your, your mortgage to be you know 20% over your net operating income. So hence the 120 debt service. So when you have these rates shoot up, our debt service isn't matching what the lender's requirements are. So the lender could A, call the loan, B, request you to pay it down, or one or the other. So you could be on a watch list for a while until you do something on that loan, on that product line. And, could, and now if you choose to refinance, like you said, if you were at three and a half, now we're at six and a half, we still have to hit that 120 threshold. Chances are you might have to pay down the mortgage or if you had a chance of raising you know, your rents in line with that increase, you might be able to break even and just refinance. So right now we're doing a lot of refinances. We've been lucky enough to find that our borrowers have raised enough rents to keep in line with that. Um, but that being said, there's been some people in some areas like LA that haven't been able to do anything on rents for many years, for two and a half years. So there could be, you know, obviously some ball out there. Um, if they, if they come to analyze a $2 million deal and they have to put three or $400,000 down payment to refi, that's going to cause a lot of action. A lot of people are going to want to sell instead of putting money, you know, that money into a deal. You know, our next educational event will be March of this year. We'll, we'll bring together a couple hundred multifamily uh, owners from the areas that you and I service. Um, and, you know, it, people are always in anticipation, you know, what predictions will Gil have uh, for the market, especially because interest rates are so crucial today. But it's now January. We have a couple months until then. Where do you believe rates are going to be trading over the next couple of months? Well, my two, my high pivot is at 4.3 to 4.4. We definitely don't want to go above that. Once, if that, those pivots are broken, then I'll have a new forecast right at that moment. On my low, which is probably at least three months to two months away low, is probably a three and a half treasury. So we'll have to see if we can break that. So if we break that treasury, we could have, you know, further decrease in rates. But again, these are all high and low pivots short term. That's the way my analysis work. I wish I can go two years down the line and tell you where we'll be at two years, but haven't quite cracked that code yet. So more or less in the next couple of months, we're going to be trading between, you know, uh, I'd say 3.8 to 4.3 on the treasuries. Um, it's a good time to lock. I see, you know, the treasuries have some room to grow as far as getting as high as 4.3 4, and 4.4. 4. Today we're at 4.1. 4.3 would translate to about what on an interest rate for a commercial loan? We're back to six and three quarters, seven percent. Yeah, yeah, it's fun. That's yeah. Fun. So, um, and and again, you as you know, rates are lower for loans over a million, lower for rate for LDDs under fifty percent. So there's some credits, and and lower income properties also get a low income credit as well. So there's a lot of perks we can add to that, but overall. I see rates going up in the short term. Okay, so we're asking our borrowers to lock. On longer term, I think we have one more dip incoming. So that's what my short term forecast is. And so, because again, to your comments on the fact that the Fed does not control the 
interest rate that you're going to get refinancing your apartment building. It's not necessarily true that although the Fed hinted at the fact they may reduce rates this year, maybe up to three times, um, that may not necessarily be felt by the average commercial investor. You may not see that in uh, the interest rate. And so it, one has to step back and say, okay, if, if we're going to hover around six to six and a half, what does that mean to my cash flow? Do I need to go ahead, Gil? Yeah, I, I just want people to understand one key metric that that most that's kind of illogical per se, but it's the way the market works. So the market is is futures trading. So they're forecasting as well. Okay. So in other words, when the Fed says that statement, that's why we're right. So people think that that's going to happen. The market reacts immediately. Now, what happens when the Fed doesn't do that? Then the market reacts immediately upward. So remember, the market's always forecasting the future. They're not waiting for things to happen. So they're bullish now that rates can go lower. Well, they came lower. Now they're moving higher. Now, why are they moving higher? Today, we have retail sales were higher. Okay, I'm expecting home sales to be better this you know, spring. So we're going to have home sales come up. So in other words, there's going to be less market influences out there as far as you know, talk for the feds to lower rates. So that has to be taken into consideration. Forget speculation. Forget what talk is. Figure out the fact that the market's moving on today's data and then forecasting. So if we get any positive news on our economy, that's actually what? Negative for interest rates. So people have to understand that. It is a futures market and it trades on forecasting the future. That's why I think an annual equity review is so important. You know, for any investment that we make, uh, we get or receive a monthly, quarterly, at least an annual statement of how our money is performing. If you have a money manager, Charles, you get statements. And if your statement didn't show up, you'd be calling uh, your money manager to say, hey, where is, show me the money, right? Where, you know, show me the performance. And yet, for many of our clients, most of our clients, their apartments are the largest asset of which they own. And for many of them, they have never done an equity review. They simply know more is coming in than is going out when in terms of income. And unfortunately, that's their approach. And they may be not realizing it, but they're stepping over dollars to pick up pennies because there's a lot of opportunity for growth, repositioning, even a miss where we see interest rates today. And that's a lot of what we do here. I know it's a lot of what the education you try to share with your clientele is, look, it's not just the interest rate. It's not just any one component to analyzing uh, the deal. And if at the end of the day, we own rentals because of cash flow, appreciation, tax savings, if you could do something today to get more of all three of those, regardless of rate, then that's probably something that you would highly consider. Well, Gail, I thank you for being with us here uh, today. I We look forward to having you at our next educational event. Anything uh, that you want to leave uh, the investors with um, as they contemplate you know, their 2024 in multifamily here locally? Well, I think what you just said is so important, Chris, that they have millions and millions of dollars of equity. They're not, they're not reviewing what, what potential upside or downfall could happen. They, they're not reviewing fundamentals. Now, where are fundamentals in our market? Not just interest rates, but you know, where is rent control going? Where is different things happening? And and what are their options? You know, just like a mutual fund, they usually have different options you can trade into. So if they looked at it in that in those that scope, I think they'd be better served. And and I know we're both here ready to serve them in that route as far as giving them that data. And I hope they take the opportunity to call us and uh, and we can serve them best and give them the data. Well, Gil, I thank you again for your time today. I know the audience definitely appreciates your input. If there's a viewer watching and they'd like you to just analyze, you know, what are their options with a refinance, a purchase loan, and so forth, what's the best way to reach you? Yeah, a, a direct call would be great. Uh, my number is 562-754-5626. Just to make it short, it's 562-754-LOAN. Give me a call. If not, if you want to email me, it's gil, G-I-L, at firstcommercialcapital.com. Excellent. 
we will pass that information along. Sir, thank you again, and we will see you soon. Thank you, Chris. There you have it, 2024. Interest rates, while they have come down, are they necessarily going to go down to the rates that we saw two, three years ago? Probably not. Even amidst the federal government's promise to lower interest rates, that may not directly correlate to the same degree of change in interest rates for you and I as a multifamily investor. The number one thing that I can encourage you is to do an annual equity review. What is your rate of return on the current equity you have in a property or properties and analyze objectively, can your equity better serve you in a better asset uh, that will bring you more cash flow, more appreciation, more tax savings? If it's not for those three, I'm out as an investor, as should you. And if we can get more of the cash flow appreciation tax savings, then we should at least be open-minded to know what is available to us. I encourage you, if you have not, or if you're a newcomer to our channel, we have hundreds of hours of educational content here on our channel for free. Some of the best content that we put out from our live educational events that we host for our personal clients and landlords here locally, everything from increasing your property's value, walking through 1031 exchanges to exit strategies, it's all there. I bring to you the pinnacles of the real estate industry here locally to serve you in the form of content. I highly encourage you to go through the videos we have here for you. And if you have not subscribed to our channel, share this video with other landlords that you know, and give this video a like, turn on alerts so that as we release the videos over this coming year, I, I would imagine there's going to be many shifts in the market. You want to keep your uh, ears uh, to the ground to what's taking place as it happens. We'll be bringing you those specialists and that information that can speak to you, all things multifamily. We look forward to doing so. Share a comment with us. What do you think about the content that we're sharing? Do you have questions of your own when it comes to your multifamily properties? We'd be happy to serve you. And for those of you that own multifamily properties in our areas of service, please contact us. We'd be happy to walk you through an annual equity review, as I call it, for free to help you analyze what are your options with your property. What is your property worth? How much equity do you have at your disposal? And what are your options as you look either for growth or if you look to exit multifamily, what options are there to help you mitigate your taxes and to ensure you still have cash flow to see you through your coming days? We're happy to help you with that analysis. And until next time, this is Chris German, the apartment dealer, wishing you positive cash flow, tenants who behave, and much protection. From Uncle Sam, till next time.